Hi, I'm Carrie, and today I'm going to read to you from a book I wrote called Stories of the Saints with pictures by Nick Thornborough, and I'm going to be reading about Gregory the Great. The great city of Rome was in ruins. When Jesus was alive, Rome had been the greatest city in the world with over a million citizens. But by the time Gregory was born, nearly 600 years later, Rome was almost abandoned. The city was full of empty buildings. Only a few thousand people lived there, and most of them were terribly poor. Plagues swept through the city, and enemies threatened it from outside. During Gregory's childhood, before he turned 20, Rome was attacked by enemies six different times. Gregory's father was a Roman senator, and Gregory followed in his footsteps. By the time he was 30, he was governor of the city. But what he really wanted to do was be a monk. So when his father died, Gregory gave all his property away. Then he turned his mansion into a monastery and became a monk. But outside Gregory's monastery, life in Rome was still hard. Torrential rains caused floods that carried off whole houses. The plague came back and bodies piled up in the streets. Then the city suffered another disaster. The Pope died. So the people of Rome turned to Gregory. Gregory made it very clear that he didn't want the job. He even wrote a letter to the emperor pleading not to be made Pope. But the people of Rome replaced Gregory's letter with one of their own, begging the emperor to make Gregory their leader. In the meantime, Gregory told the people of Rome they needed to ask God for his help to end the plague in their city. All the people of Rome formed a huge parade, singing, Lord, have mercy. As the parade round through the empty streets, 80 people died of the plague. But when the procession passed over St. Peter's Bridge, the Archangel Michael appeared in the sky with a flaming sword blazing in his hand. As all the people watched, he put the sword back in its sheath, and the crowd could hear angels begin to sing. The plague in Rome was over. Then word came from the emperor, appointing Gregory as pope. That was the last thing in the world that Gregory wanted, so he hid himself in a basket and had a merchant carry him out of the city. Then he fled through the woods outside town and escaped into the forests on the mountains. When the people of Rome heard that Gregory had gone, the whole city fasted and prayed. They sent searchers beyond the city walls to look for him. Three days later, they found him hiding in the woods. And when they brought him back to the city, Gregory finally agreed to be Pope. Once he became Pope, the poor people of Rome were always the first thing on his mind. Under Gregory's watch, each priest had to go out into the streets and care for the poor himself. If any priest refused, he had to find another job. Gregory loved music, and he had thousands of beautiful melodies from Jewish, Palestinian, and Syrian roots collected and written down. He wrote books of his own, and he was the first pope to send priests to share the story of Jesus with the people in far off England. When a famine struck the city, Gregory sold church property to feed the people. He ordered the church farms to give away the food they grew for free. He wouldn't eat until all his monks had been fed first. And when he sat down to dinner, he always invited a dozen poor people to share his meal. But one day, when Gregory came into the dining room, he saw 13 people at his table. He asked his steward why there was an extra guest. I only see 12 guests, his steward said. During dinner, the face of Gregory's extra guest kept changing. One minute, he looked like a handsome boy. The next, 
He looked like a dignified old man. Finally, Gregory took the man aside. What is your name? He asked. Do you remember the man who came to your monastery once? The man asked Gregory. He had lost all he owned in a shipwreck, and you gave him money and a dish that you loved because it had belonged to your mother. I do, Gregory said. I am that man, the guest told him. Or rather, I am the angel God has sent you. He gave you the seed of St. Peter because of that gift you gave. And I will protect you for as long as you live in this world. God gave me so much for such a small gift, Gregory said. What will he not give me if I work for him with all my strength? Thanks for listening.